Right. Um, hello, my name is Andrei Ayupov. I'm from uh, Intel Labs. I'm going to talk about um, Rabbit Accelerated Design with Chisel. So it's a project we've, uh, we, we did um, about a year, a little more ago. So I'll start with the background. Uh, so the, originally the uh, methodology that we worked on uh, was targeting this uh, particular uh, platform, which is Xeon FPGA, and the idea was that we wanted to make programming of that platform easy and more productive. So that included um, how we deal with the hardware side on FPGA, as well as the software side on the host and the software hardware interface. But uh, what I'm going to talk about will also apply to any hardware, um, accelerator hardware design um, with an off-chip memory. Um, and um, to, to a big extent and to a small extent, uh, the components that we built that I'm going to talk about, they can be applied to any accelerator pretty much. Right. So, uh, so th this project is open sourced. It's on the GitHub. It um, um, it has two uh, hardware uh, backend support: uh, System C and Chisel. System C that includes HLS flow. So I'm going to talk about Chisel mostly today. Um, so the the goal for the hardware accelerator design, the hardware side, um, is as it, uh, it is clear from the title, is to design hardware accelerator more rapidly, right? Um, so we thought about two directions. Uh, one direction that I think is much more impactful is uh, uh, building templates, microtextual templates. It is um, not a generator per se because um, it is not generating the complete instance. But um, the intuition behind it is that um, applications from the same application domain, or for example, uh, accelerators that, that target the same platform, they may share a similar uh, microarchitecture, and uh, those may be captured in a template. So you can think of a software library like MapReduce. Um, it is something that captures the control um, and, and how the data flows part of it, but it doesn't talk about the concrete applications, so some of the things are left to the user to implement. So why it is a really good idea, I believe that the real benefit here is that the template creation effort is amortized across multiple instances that you can get out of it. If you need to build multiple applications in the same domain, that's the way to go, um, because you can um, hide all the uh, complex things that uh, we deal in hardware design in that template and leave only maybe simpler algorithmic specific data path um, like logic to implement for a user which is much, much easier. Um, and then the design instance is generated with those components implemented by the template that some implemented or left to implement by user. And also, uh, of course, uh, Chisel uh, is really helpful to build a reusable hardware components, and I'll talk about some of them that we found useful that can be uh, leveraged by any other design. So back to the uh, to platform that we were targeting. This is a, an FPGA that talks to a, a, an external memory. Um, so we found that for any accelerator we build for that platform, we really need a few common things, right? So um, this accelerator it talks to a bus, so it has common bus interface. Uh, many of our accelerators, they need data to, uh, well, all of them need data to operate on, but some of them may um, uh, have various um, access patterns to data, um, like a streaming as a uh, straightforward example, but there co also could be random high locality accesses or um, random with no locality accesses. And then um, the, uh, um, the components that can actually uh, help here is um, on the right, you can see we, we have uh, uh, the, uh, do you see my mouse here? Yeah, so the uh, load units and store units and load and memory arbiters is something that will be there for any accelerator, uh, maybe in different uh, variety and, and different number of them, so, but, so, but this is parameterizable. And then we want the user to focus on the computational kernel only. So compute, computation kernel, uh, it has very high level API through the uh, read and write ports. Um, and those are connected to load store units. 
And load store units, uh, they are parameterized with buffer size to support a uh, various number of outstanding requests to, to memory. They're also user type specific, so we're not operating with cache, uh, based on cache lines. It is for uh, the, the data type that is important to your application. So it could be a pixel, it could be um, some rank value, or um, whatever, whatever the application um, is uh, talking in terms of, right? And then um, the user type are either unpacked or packed by those load store units into cache lines that are then talking to the bus. Uh, it supports burst requests for streaming applications, and it may also reorder out of order responses for you. Um, so it's hiding quite a bit of logic there. So the memory arbiters, they are um, taking those loads or units, um, multiple of them, and they need to arbitrate uh, data that coming th uh, from them and to them. And we're extending the run robin arbiter from the chisel library, and but we add automatically the uh, load store unit ID as a metadata to the request so that it travels with that request and when the response comes back, we see that ID and we steer um, data based on that ID to the right load store unit. Um, so this is a simple accelerator that you can build uh, um, based on that template. It's a vector add example. Um, so here you can see that the, uh, the load store template is an actually an abstract class um, and Chisel allows you to have this nice uh, um, um, use of, of a template uh, which is really uh, is an abstract class that you will extend with your user specific things. And what it has, um, so you can think of it as a, we have a, a vector add which is combinational uh, portion of the logic. So it's our accelerator, simple accelerator here. The way we build it, we're using SDF actor module that I will talk just in a little bit um, uh, as library component that, that we built. Uh, essentially, it uh, wraps around your uh, combinational logic with decoupled I.O. interfaces um, that is part of the Chisel library. Um, but then you can see that uh, there are some functions that user needs to implement, and those are talking about load store um, unit parameters. So user specifies what um, um, so based on the name, so you need you provide a, a, a label that you will refer to later on. You specify load and store parameters. For example, it's the, your user type that you will get um, as a, uh, responses in this with this type, and then some um, parameters like um, buffer size for the loader units. So similar for the store unit, and then you also specify when your computation is done based on. Um, based on your um, uh, application. So and then uh, you basically connect the vector add combination logic uh, to, the, uh, to those load store units, to the responses of them, to the data ports of them, and then for the requests, you basically generate requests and we provide also some um, um, modules that will generate uh, simple requests to the to the load store units, like for example, if you uh, the simple one would be a burst uh, request uh, when you um, request n number of elements just um, in the beginning of the operation. So that's uh, that's a way to do it um, uh, with this simple syntax. So this is a fairly simple thing that you can then plug in to the um, top level RTL, and it will just uh, work on, on your FPGA. Um, it, it hides quite a bit of uh, lines of code, of chisel code behind it, and you can see um, you can reuse it for multiple applications as well. So um, as part of it, we also build uh, multiple hardware components. I'll talk uh, through them next. So SDF actor that you already uh, saw is an interesting one. It is stand for static data flow actor. Um, it is something, uh, a computational unit that uh, has N inputs and M outputs and all those parameterizable. And then um, there is an FSM that is part of that um, that uh, waits for all inputs to be uh, valid uh, to, to, um, to compute the output or outputs. And then it could be actually abstract data flow actor which just pr propagates talkings and may be very useful for initial microarchitectural exploration when you don't want to introduce actually uh, computation yet. 
Um, or you can uh, provide the um, user vector function as well as we did with the vector add. Um, so type repacker is something that we use in load store units. It takes uh, one data type and converts or serializes it, deserializes it to a different data type. Uh, it's using, uh, it's uh, um, using uh, just straight bit uh, assignment if the width match or otherwise it has an FSM machine to marshal, marshal the data type or, uh, and store intermediate results and also supports flushing if you have incomplete backing. And about them. So um, the Chills uh, provides this uh, chaining syntax that we really like. You just connect things uh, in one line uh, through that type repacker. So we also have uh, pipelining features that would introduce uh, a decouple stage or pipeline stage um, that is also was uh, fairly used in our uh, design. And then the last slide is talking about a more complicated pipette uh, template which is a module that takes a combination module and a latency value and uh, does the following transformation. It, it converts the input and output to decoupled I.O. It adds end stages of registers and then it uh, actually uh, triggers the fertile pass that does retiming of those registers across a combination logic based on uh, some simple timing model. Um, so that is it. So thank you. Thank you. If, if you have any questions, please come up to the mic and ask, but I'll, I'll start us off with one. Um, could you comment on uh, the quality of the retimings you saw coming out of your chisel flow versus, uh, I think you had mentioned system C. Uh, do you see similar like throughput numbers when you use chisel compared to uh, like a HLS so what one. metric you're comparing? Quality? The, the Just over retiming. The quality oh, the retiming? Yeah. Um, so uh, that's a good question. So there is also retiming in a backend tools uh, that, that can do it. So what we found is de with decoupled I.O., uh, first the backend tools don't do a good job. So they struggle retiming it, especially in the PGA flows. Um, now we uh, we're probably in a very similar position to HLS because we're essentially using some um, timing model that is not the real one in the end. Um, so I would say it's probably very similar in that, in that regard. So you, you mentioned this work was done about a year ago. So I was wondering what sort of is, are the future directions of this work um, that you're planning on doing? Um, so future direction, I think, the learning from that work was that the templates is something really powerful, um, hardware templates, and in, they're really nicely Im implementable in Chisel as a framework. So that is definitely um, something to, um, to get out of it, but we we'll also um, use and plan to use it for any um, prototyping work. When you build, for example, an accelerator for ASIC, uh, and you need to product up an FPGA, this gives you a really good framework to do so. Uh. With that, we'll thank the speaker. Thank you very much.